Hello everyone, and welcome to the new dungeon, the Seat of the Triumvirate. This dungeon has four bosses, so let's go over all of them and see what we need to do to defeat them. The first boss is Zural the Ascended. Now what you need to do for this boss is face the boss away from the group, and if you see the starting area that he's sitting in actually looks like a bit of an arena that's sunk into the ground, you cannot move him out of this arena because if you do, he will reset. So remember to keep him in this arena, and as a tank you want to kite him around the edges of this arena. Now periodically he will cast Null Palm in which he faces a certain direction at someone and casts a frontal AoE cleave ability. Whether you're DPS, healer, or tank you need to get away from this ability. And he also casts Decimate on the tank which is pure magic damage so use your magic mitigator for that. And then it starts spawning a void zone underneath the boss. This void zone will do damage to you and buff the boss, so move him out of there and continue tanking in a new area. This will also spawn adds. These adds can be stunned, snared, rooted, any kind of CC can be applied to them except for polys and saps like hard CCs. And these adds need to be DPS down as quickly as possible. They leave a trail of this void zone behind them, so you start losing more area. And if they reach the boss and actually touch the boss, they will explode dealing large AoE damage to everyone. So make sure they go down, adds are number one priority during this step. After two decimate and add phases, the boss will begin fixing fixating people. Now if the boss is fixating you, you have to run away and not let the boss hit you. The boss will be doing increased damage and knocking you back. Also if you are fixated remember do not run out of the arena because if the boss steps out of this arena he will reset. One person in the group will be in the void realm which means that they will see other special adds and with these special adds after you kill 10 of them you can use a new action button that takes you out of this realm and stuns the boss for 20 seconds. When the boss is stunned pop your DPS cooldowns pop bloodlust heroism at this point and go all out on this boss to take him down during this phase. So remember. Keep the adds rooted, DPS them down first, do not let them reach the boss, do not stand in anything you shouldn't be standing in, and move away from no palm, as well as kite the boss when he is fixated on you. The next boss is Saprish, and while this boss fight looks like one main boss with two pets, this is actually a council fight. All three of these bosses share an HP pool, and they help each other out throughout the fight. So the long story short with this fight is to target the Shade Wing, no matter who you are. No matter if you're the tank or the DPSers, you have to target the Shade Wing. Now as a tank, you want to pick up threat on all three of these mobs before they start jumping around everywhere, but the Shade Wing is your number one priority. This Shade Wing will jump to someone and begin casting Dread Screech. Dread Screech will disorient everyone for a few seconds and do damage to everyone, which will cause a wipe with the disorient. This needs to be interrupted 100% of the time. So if everyone is on Shade Wing, then everyone will know when the cast happens and will know to interrupt that as soon as it goes out. From there on out, you do also get bombs on the floor, which are kind of hard to see in certain void areas, so try to tank on top of the cobblestone areas and those bombs look like this and periodically the boss will make those bombs explode in case they're not already triggered. If you walk into a bomb, you will get stunned for 5 seconds and take large damage. And when they're triggered, you see the AoE around them. You do not want to be standing in there because, again, it stuns you and does damage. The last person in this boss fight is Dark Fang. And basically what Dark Fang does is teleport to a certain location behind someone and begin frontal cone damaging abilities. So if Dark Fang teleports right behind you, move away. Do not stand anywhere in front of Dark Fang and the damage won't be hitting you. If the damage does land on you, it actually buffs the main boss, Saprish, and makes him do more damage. Saprish also periodically charges people which does buff him, so as the fight goes on with Dark Fang, Saprish, and Shade Wing, they all end up triggering a buff for Saprish which makes him hit a lot harder. So as the fight progresses, more damage will be handed out throughout the fight, so healers be aware of that, but as long as you keep Shade Wing interrupted 100% of the time and don't stand in any of the bombs or the frontal cone abilities, you should be okay. Up next we have Viceroy Nezar. He limits the battlefield by bringing in a void fog around the edges, which does do damage if you are standing in it, and periodically he does summon tentacle adds. These adds need to go down as soon as possible. However, one thing to know about these adds is when the adds come out, he will be casting Howling Dark after that. So you should always have one person stay on the main boss, Nazar, while the rest go onto the tentacles. Now here for me running this dungeon, 
As a tank, I stayed on the main boss, interrupted the Howling Dark, which is an AoE fear that afflicts everyone, causing you to run into the Void Zone, while all my DPSers damaged the tentacles and took them down as quickly as possible. When Nazar does begin casting Entropic Force, you should run up to Nazar and hug him as closely as possible, no matter where you are in the room. This is basically the downdraft ability from Darkheart Thicket. The last pair of adds that he does summon are Shadow Guards, which put a bubble on him while he does cast Eternal Twilight. What you need to do during this part is take down the two Shadow Guards that he did summon as quickly as possible. You have about 10 seconds. And with both the Shadow Guards down, the bubble around Nazar is now gone and you can interrupt him from casting Eternal Twilight, which if it's not interrupted will one shot the whole group. So make sure you DPS those adds down as quickly as possible and interrupt the boss. So again, handle the adds, hug the boss when you should, interrupt the fear, and you should be okay. Lastly for this dungeon we have Elura. So for phase 1, Elura will summon adds and these adds have to be killed as quickly as possible because these adds open up a rift which summons more smaller adds as well and these smaller adds will spawn a void zone underneath them causing you to lose area in this room. Sometime during this phase as well, you will have the Fragment of Despair. As of right now, it's very difficult to see. It basically looks like an Armageddon from Kill Jaden, but purple. And since the whole room is purple, it's a little bit difficult to see. You'll see me point it out right here. And again here. So keep an eye out when you see Fragment of Despair go out. Look everywhere in the room, and you have to soak it by standing in it. Much like Kill Jaden's Armageddon, if no one soaks it by standing in it, then it'll do massive AoE damage and will probably wipe your group. However, if one person soaks it, it'll only do about 2 million damage. After killing all of the adds, Elura will enter a backlash phase caused by Elaria breaking her bubble. During this backlash phase, Elura does take increased damage, so pop your DPS cooldowns, your heroism, bloodlust, anything you need to in order to deal as maximum amount of damage as possible. These two phases will repeat one more time, so you will have adds that come out again and another fragment of despair, followed by another backlash. Immediately after that backlash, you will enter phase 2 in which Elura will actually just be tankable in the middle of the stage where she's at and will start casting AoE around her that you need to avoid. This does do a high amount of damage so try not to get hit by it while taking Elura down. I hope this boss guide helps. I know this dungeon will be out. I already did a plus 8 of it myself so be on the lookout. If you got this yourself, make sure to train your team beforehand, share this video with them so that they know exactly what to do for all the boss fights, and as always, good luck out there.